Welcome to my store. Okay. Okay. So now we're filling up the tank, plus we're dripping the, uh, the stuff. If you look down here in the bucket, right now we've about doubled the volume of the water in that bucket. Okay? These all came from the same tank, so therefore you can drip them all together. If you get the stuff from different tanks, of course you've got to drip them separately, but uh, at the store they were all in the same water. So what we do, we take an empty bucket, we put water in it, we take the salt, we very carefully measure it. You do not want to put too much salt in your water. If you put too much salt in your water, you got the Dead Sea, and the Dead Sea is not good. It's always good to take your hydrometer, check the water before you start, tap it on the sides, so that way it'll take the bubbles off. Okay, as you can see, we're right in the safe zone. Okay? Keeping your fish tank about the same all the time is what's really crucial. Any particular number in that safe zone is good. If you have mostly fish, stay towards the lower part of it. If you have mostly coral, stay up towards the higher part of it. Okay? But uh, the more important thing is consistency. You want it always to be roughly the same. So when you start your water change, check your salinity. And when you finish it, check it again. Just to make sure that you haven't uh, taken things off. When you're pouring the water back in, pour it in onto your hand. That way it's not going to hit the bottom of the tank and go whoosh, whoosh, and have everything go flying around. Make a huge mess, you know, knock things down. Okay, always stir the salt up really well in the bucket. If you are just putting salt water in here and you dump the salt in, it's going to change the salinity until that salt dissolves. And if you've got a tank with live corals and stuff, and you put salt on top of them, you will burn them. You will hurt them. Okay, because when the salt is too pure, like in a crystal form, then, uh, see, that's what I do. You just kind of measure it off in the bag. It just makes it look like I'm not measuring it. I actually am. But uh, it's funnier this way. And we're getting down. This is probably going to be the last pick up. So we don't put salt in the next one until we find out if we actually need it. And yes, this filled the tank. So we're going to go turn the water on. That way we don't have a flood. If you've watched some of our other videos, you've seen floods before. We don't need more of them. Our very first video, we had a flood that wiped out half the store. Okay. Now, the urchin. You can just pick him up. There's some hermit crabs crawling on top of him already. Just set him in. He's not spiky. There's his mouth. Okay. And uh, you can see how the spikes are moving around. They're actually made out of calcium carbonate. And if you uh, scrape the outer coating off, you can use them to write in a chalkboard. That's why they're called pencil urchins. This guy down here is a sea cucumber. This is a hairy sea cucumber, known for that because of his bumps. Okay. And uh, he can change shapes a lot. What he does is he actually glues himself down every time he steps. Now, I don't know if he's going to do it for us now, but he's got these little tube feet that come out. He sets them against the, whatever he's hanging on to. They're glued into place. Then he moves forward. When he wants to uh, move again, he has a releaser that uh, he releases the glue lifts up the foot, moves it to a new location, and glues it down again. If you get one of these and he's on the glass, you just start to vibrate him. Just wiggle him back and forth in your hand, and that'll get him to bring his feet in. If you just jerk him off, you can move him, of course, you'll rip his feet off. And he will grow them back, but he has to use energy to do that. Now what this guy does, he has a detritivore. He eats the small bits of food on the bottom of the tank, this guy actually eats hair algae, plus he'll eat coralline algae. See that purple stuff over there? That's coralline algae, okay? So if you really like your coralline algae a lot, you don't put pencil urchins in because you ain't going to have none left. If you're not really, don't matter which way or one way, they're actually a kind of a decorative creature. They're very durable. I have seen one where it was in Pete's tank, and Pete does not clean his tank very often. And it actually grew side pegs onto his pegs. 
So they looked like a Christmas tree that you'd cut the branches off. Like it came up and then there was branches coming off the sides. It was really cool. Okay. And then of course the hermit crabs. Just make sure you pick them all up and uh, try not to get all the sea cucumber poo that was in the bag. But you never add anybody else's water, as I've told you in other videos. And then what I like to do with these guys, I put them in one spot, and that way the customer knows, okay, they're alive. They left that spot. My son used to refer to hermit's crabs as, are these the shell that tickles? Because when he was a toddler, we used to go to Florida Keys and we'd catch these all the time. And uh, my boy, of course, we'd put some in his hand and they'd walk around and, Daddy, these are the snails that tickle. He was very cute. Yeah, he's still cute now. You've seen him in the other videos. So, basically, this is the second visit here. We've made a huge difference in the hair algae. When we first came, it was like in patches that long some places, okay? So uh, in another couple of weeks, there won't be hair algae in this tank and there'll probably never be hair algae in it again. Okay, so we'll see you in the next video. Press the